Okay, friends, let's finish up the last piece of this puzzle, which is the um, plating the scenic package um, and then exporting that file. So I'm just back in my top plan view and I'm now going to go create the three plates. We'll start with pulling um, some resources from our template file that are not in this file. Uh, and then we will plate the ground plan, label it, we'll plate the section view, and then we will do two elevations, one for the floor and one for the back wall, okay? Um, I'd also like us to do a quick render view alongside the ground plan, because I think that because we've done all of this work with texturing, that'll be a useful image uh, to show. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here into my sheet layers and you'll notice because we are working off of this mech theater template, I don't have the same sheet layers that I had before. So when I double click on this light plot drafting, it's got some weird title block. It's got two drawings all put together on the sheet. Um, so I'm going to first just delete everything off of this piece of paper. Um, we can, let's pop into edit and see what size it is, right? Because it might be the correct page setup and it is. So it's one printer page and it's 35.6 by 23.6, which means it's a 36 by 24 sheet of paper, which is arch D. So that's great. Um, and we will just leave it at that. Okay. Um, and then let's rename the sheet, the ground plan, because that will be sheet one of our drawing package. Um, the section can be sheet two. And I bet it's also, let's look, yep, it's also a nice uh, ArchD sheet. And then I'm gonna just duplicate that and make a sheet three that's gonna be elevations, okay? So that's sort of the basic setup. Um, I have a dangling 11 by 17 over here in the background that I'm not gonna end up using on this project. Um, so we're gonna use sheets one through three, and then I'm gonna just rename this X to keep it out of my hair, right? So I know my sheet one is ground plan, sheet two is section, sheet three is elevations. Okay, great. Um, now I wanna go get our title block from our template file, um, and we'll use the resource manager to do it. So I'm gonna go to file, I'm going to open up the uh, Cal Poly 2021 template. You'll find yours wherever you stored it on your computer, or you can just create a new file using that template. And then you can come over here and you can look at these sheets, right? So this is the title block that we would like to use, okay? Um, I'm going to go back to Campo Maldito, and then I'm going to navigate in the resource, resource manager to pull that title block into this file, right? So when you pop open your resource manager, I'm just gonna pin it open by hitting that little plus minus sign. You can choose both things from this file, so that's all of the items that have ever been imported into this file, or you can come to this Vectorworks template from our class where we'll go into the title block format, and then we're going to double click to bring in Arch D, okay? It is converting this to a watermark document, which won't, won't happen to you because you're already in uh, that file. And then it says we can do all of these things. We're just gonna replace this title block format because that is the play, yes, uh, and the data, okay. And the revision data. <laughs> um, and now when I click on my screen, because I've double clicked here, it will import that into my file. So now I have my Cal Poly template here on my elevations sheet, okay? Um, and we're gonna do that on all three sheets, right? And so it's on my cursor right now and I'm just going to click on each page and get one copy on each page, okay? Great. Um, next stop, back on our, sh on our design layer. Let's go into the scenery layer, okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and take our viewport for our ground plan. So view, create viewport, put that on our ground plan layer, call it the ground plan. Excellent. Great. Okay. So that will now come through onto this sheet. Um, I'm going to set a uh, render view right next to it. So to do that, I'll go back to the scenery layer, shift C, right? Tip up get into this render view. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm actually going to adjust my 
perspective so that it's a little bit more open, right? So it looks a little bit more theatrical. And then I'm going to switch into OpenGL. If you want it to take more time on the render, you can switch it into uh, a more detailed render view like RenderWorks, but mostly that's just gonna take more time unless you've done specific lighting effects. Um, so I'm just doing this and then I will click back on my regular cursor so that I'm not selecting anything. I don't love it. Uh, and create another viewport from this angle, right? That will go on here. And this is the render view. And it will put it next to the existing ground plan, okay? So because we have so much space, that's really easy to do. Sometimes if I'm filling more of the space with my ground plan, I would take my render view and make it smaller and put it in a corner or something like that. Um, but I think this is great for this initial plate. Um, so now I wanna do a section. I'm gonna come in here first and move my annotation label down a little bit. Um, and then I'll do a section view just the same way we did with the Gary Marshall. So I have my ground plan view selected. I come over here and I create a section viewport. Um, and I'm just going to pull it straight from the middle and pick left or right. It's going to go on the section plate. And we're going to call it section. Um, and that should be fine. There it is. Okay, great. Similar to our last one, we would want to change this section style to be that diagonal hatch, right? That we've uh, used before. So instead of a solid fill, we would want to use diagonal lines on anything that's been cut through in this section. Um, and that is a class update, if you remember. So if we do go into the classes, we find this section style class, we edit that then we can change our fill from solid to hatch and we can choose the cast iron or whatever the diagonal hatch would be okay and now with a quick update this is going to look more correct great okay um so that's our section view on our second plate and then on our third plate we'll do elevations so here are the things we want to remember about that step. Um, the first one is let's go back to our ground plan and look at our annotations inside of this. Okay, so I'm going to go into the annotations layer. I'm going to just real quick pull this down a little bit so it's clear of the drawing and do the same thing here, right? So this will adjust the section slightly because it is connected, it's linked, but it will also uh, clean up the way that this looks for us, okay? I'm now going to come in and label the various elements on the set, right? So I'm going to probably use um, the callout tool or the text tool to label what the specific pieces are, okay? And I will also put two drawing labels for the floor and the wall, which we will have um, as uh, some, as the two scenic elements that we're drafting. So for example, beanbag chair is now a call out over here. Um, and I would typically put this into the dimensions class because that's going to give me that blue that I like. So let's see, dimension. Do you turn blue, baby? Oh no, because this isn't my newest template. Got it. Uh, I can do that in attributes though. I can turn it blue. Um, just for some contrast, right? So beanbag chair, right? Tables, chairs, whatever. Then I'm gonna do these viewports for the walls, okay? And the way I do that is I come into this dims notes thing um, and I look for a reference marker, right? And that will allow me, ooh, it's not quite the one I want, right? So it will allow me to place a marker that will point to wherever I'm going to send us to look for these elevations, okay? So I'm gonna use one that has the sheet and the drawing number and it has an arrow, okay? Um, so that 
will be the reference marker I swap in, and then I can come and rotate that in to point to the wall, for example. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it might be an arrow, there we go, arrow angle. So let's do 90, great. Let's do 80. <laughs> um, and then and then we'll do the same thing with another drawing or another reference marker to point at that floor. Um, and we want to swap out that arrow. We can also do that here, right? You can change it up here before you start adding them. Um, and that will then allow us to, to place a reference marker. These currently uh, have a bright red mark next to that link, and that's because they're not linked to anything. Um, and what I'm going to do in just a moment is create the viewports that they will link to, and then we will assign those viewports um, over here where it's asking about a linked viewport, and then the software will automatically track where that, what plate that viewport is on um, and what drawing number it is. So let's exit back out of this viewport annotation for just a moment and we're gonna go into our design layers. We're gonna come back to our scenery layer um, and I'm going to create two symbols. Here we go. Feels like we're going backwards to go forwards, but this will allow me to draft these two elements square to the picture plane. Um, and that's a way that I sometimes draft scenery. Sometimes I would draft it in other ways, but I'm just gonna show you this process for drafting scenery. So I'm gonna select my floor. I'm going to turn it into a symbol. So I go to modify, I say create symbol, and I say this is the floor. Great, okay. Um, and then I pick an insertion point for that floor and I let it just drop it into the regular deal. I'm gonna do the same thing with the wall. So I'm gonna come up here, select the wall, modify, model, modify, create symbol. And this is the wall. Um, and then I'm going to, because it says next mouse click, right? I can click to have that be the insertion point. Um, so that was step one, I created symbols. So now they're in the resource manager. If you look in Campo Maldito, you'll see those wall, that wall and floor. So there's the wall and somewhere there will be a rectangle that's called floor, right? There's the floor, okay? Um, so now I'm going to create a new design layer, new. We're gonna call it drafting. Um, and I'm gonna turn off everybody else uh, and then I will bring in those two elements. So I can double click on the floor, bring that puppy in, right? Double click on the wall and bring that in. Okay, so resource manager, let's go find that wall down at the bottom and we'll bring that in, okay? Um, right now they're both askew. They're not square to the picture frame. So I'm going to rotate each of them to be strictly horizontal, right? So by selecting two points along there, I can rotate it so now it's square to the front of the page. I can hold command to select the other object and then rotate that so that it is horizontal, so that it's square. The next trick is gonna be to move things so that they're progressing up a diagonal so that if I'm taking a top view and a front view, it's going to be that arrangement, okay? And I do have this uh, shelf attached to the wall, so I'm just gonna leave that in, okay? Um, that'll be part of the wall unit. So let's first uh, create the viewport for the floor. So I'm gonna go to view, create viewport, and it's going to go on the elevations plate, and it's going to be called the floor. Um, and because it's an elevation, we want it to be in half inch scale instead of quarter inch scale. And we're gonna say, okay. So unfortunately it's got everything in it, right? But that's okay. We just crop our viewport by drawing a rectangle. And then we edit the annotations, right? Boop, 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 boop. Um, just like that. And we bring in our dimensions using our ASME standard and some blue ink, cause that's how I roll. 
didn't stick. The blue didn't stick, but that's okay. So there's my dimensions of my random floor. Yours could be a more logical size probably, and that would be great. Um, we're gonna go ahead and change them blue later because I just, I just like my dimensions to be blue. That's my weird thing. That's how it goes. Um, so there's my floor. Now I'm gonna go do my wall. And I'm gonna do it by just duplicating this and editing it. So if I edit the crop, then I can uh, go ahead and get the top view of my wall right here. Um, exit the viewport crop, do, 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 right? Adjust my annotations. Sorry, Leo, I'm busy. Talk to your child. Talk to your boy, Leo, I'm busy. So this is my wall top view, right? Okay. And I'm actually gonna change this label to B. Right, so I'm gonna make this A and that B. Um, and then I'm gonna do a wall front view. So I'm gonna duplicate that again, and I'm going to change the view to front. And update. And edit the crop to find that front view, wherever it is. It's all the way down here. That's okay. Find my way back. Um, you can also do this as uh, a viewport, take a clean viewport from the front view in your model, right? So instead of this whole game I'm playing, you can just come back into your drafting, um, switch into front view, and then just take your viewport from this perspective, right? So that may be the quicker way to get where we're going. Um, any case, uh, I'm going to come in and tweak out all of these dimensions, right? Um, this is going to be B2, right, um, because it's the wall front view. I can change it here. And then I can now go link viewports from my ground plan view into these uh, elevations. So if I come back to my ground plan, I come in and edit the annotations. I can now select this drawing marker, which is for the wall, and I can link it to, um, let's do wall top, right? And that now will say B3 because it's unit B on sheet three. And then this one, I'm going to link to the floor. So I'm again going to come in here and I'm gonna be like A3 is that floor unit, okay? So now those drawing labels correspond with the drawings on sheet three um, and automatically will have the correct notation to indicate where you would find them on sheet three. Um, so that linking of the viewports to the drawing labels is a new thing um, in the last couple of years in Vectorworks and it's super useful because it means it's now automatically going to update. So if I were to move this to a different sheet, like if I were to move this to a second sheet of elevations or something like that, it would automatically track where that's going and also what I'm doing in terms of drawing labels. So that is uh, that step. So go ahead and dimension this out. Make sure these two are aligned so that they're sharing dimensions as appropriate. And, uh, and then you would just double click in here and update your title block uh, accordingly, okay? All of that should be pretty similar to what we've done before on our title blocks, but you will wanna just make sure that you've got everything uh, matched up and correct. So again, our ground plan and our section view are in quarter inch scale. We are putting a render view alongside our ground plan view in our, uh, 
in our ground plan sheet. We'll then have a section view. You want to update your section style so that you get those diagonal lines, um, that diagonal hatch in your theater. Uh, you want to do elevations for the scenic elements in your show, anything that would be built by your carpenter. Um, in this case, I'm doing a wall and a floor. And then um, that will all now be exported uh, using the publish command, which I don't think we've used before. So previously, you've probably just said export a PDF. Now we're going to use publish, um, and so we come to file and we go to publish down here, um, and then you can check these three, move them over to this publish side, right? Hit the publish button all the way over here, and it'll ask you if you want to save it as a set. You don't need to, but you can, um, and then this will be a combined PDF with those three sheets in it. That's what you'll submit for this assignment. Um, I would put today's date here as a leading element so that we know. So it would be 10, 11, 21, Bartenstein Campo Maldito. Put it on a desktop someplace you can find it. Um, and then it's going to now publish that and it'll let you know when it's done. Um, and then it probably will automatically open it up in Adobe Acrobat so you can see the published file. Right, so now it's published as a three-page um, drafting package. Yours will be better than mine. Perfect. Um, so that is the Campo Maldito uh, scenic drafting assignment. And hopefully this whole series has been more clear than what I gave you before. And you will now have a better sense of what I'm looking for as the product and also how to navigate through the process of both drafting and then plating a scenic design. So thanks so much. Let me know as you have questions and I will do my best to help you out. Bye friends.